Hello and welcome to Open Source Code. This will be our series on Linux operating system and how to use it. In this series, we are going to cover how to use Linux, install Linux, what are the different applications that you can use for the day-to-day -day usages and we are also going to focus a lot on how to work with the command line. Basically, a lot of power with Linux lies in its command line. So, welcome to this series. We will be starting this series with the introduction to what is open source. Now, you might be having a question why I am going to talk about open source. Well, Linux is an open source software. So what is the concept behind open source software and how is it different from other softwares? Well, an open source software gives you certain advantages over the other proprietary softwares. Do I mean that open source software is an unlicensed software? No. Open source software is a licensed software but the license terms and conditions are dictated in a different manner. Here, the license is given in such a way that the user, developer, student or anyone who wants to utilize this particular software can take the maximum advantage of it. The license is a different kind of a license where it is not restrictive but it is more encouraging to the users. Now the very interesting thing, being open source, you get a certain advantage which you don't get in the other closed source softwares or proprietary softwares. Well, what does open source software give? Open source softwares usually give you four advantages. One, it gives you the freedom to use the software on n number of machines. Second, you are free to modify this software. When I talk about modification, it means that you can get the source code of the software, you can make changes to that and you can have a modified version of the software. You can study the software. Now try to understand one thing. Software, when you use it as an application, let us say you are using a graphics tool, fine? Using is one thing. You have to study how to use it. But in terms of a programmer, if you want to modify that software, right, you need to have source code. A very similar analogy is about having a recipe. A recipe gives you the steps how to make a particular dish. Now, if I give you the dish and you want certain changes to that dish, it becomes very difficult to find out how you can make changes or how this dish was made if you don't if you are not provided with the source code or the recipe in case of computer programs or softwares you need this source code so the source code provides you a good understanding of how this particular program was written the source code availability makes it very very useful for people who are interested in developing the thing. There is a concept, do not reinvent the wheel. Now, the wheel has been there and modifications have been going on, right? So in real world what you will find is there are lot of things that have been continuously developing at a very fast pace. Why? Because the existing designs are available. In case of software, uh, what happens is the source code is not provided. So people end up rewriting the same code again and again. So if you are provided with the source code of the existing one, you can take advantage of your skills and knowledge to make the software more better. So you can study it much better and you can develop it much better. The other freedom that you get with this is you can share this software with others. Yes, 
you heard it right you can share this software with others at no cost or it's up to you you could charge for the media and other resources no one is going to stop you from doing that so because of this last condition many people feel that the software is free of cost no when we talk about open source software it primarily talks about the freedoms that you get i have already discussed these four freedoms freedom to use freedom to study freedom to modify and freedom to share so the free term here refers to the freedom of the software so where did this concept come from so long time back in 1980 around 1984 a guy named r m s richard m stallman came up with this concept of free software where he designed or drafted a license called as the glu gpl okay glu gpl under which he has strictly mentioned these four rules and the free software or any software which is there under this license gives you this four freedoms now there can be generally some confusion relating to free software and open source software people have different opinions about it in general we prefer to use the term free when the software is under the gnu gpl license other licenses we would prefer to use the term open source or in most of the cases to be on the safer side we will just use the term force so i am going to use the term force after this so what rms back in 84 drafted this license there is long story behind it i am not going to get into the details you can search on the net for that and rms at that particular time decided to have a system which will be completely free so he wanted a complete operating system which would be under this particular license and the name of the operating system he decided to call it the gnu system okay which meant gnu not unix okay the idea was to have an operating system which would be similar to unix but not unix now what does an operating system consist of operating system primarily consists of two parts one is the core kernel you can compare it to the engine of any automobile and the remaining parts which are your shell accessories applications programming tools compilers and all the other things so now what approach rms took was to design the applications first okay and the kernel part was remaining so the development kept on happening all lot of applications were available but no kernel was available so in general when we say a term operating system we call it a combination of the kernel and the applications uh, technical people will refer to the kernel as <coughs> the operating system so here i am going to use the term operating system for the whole thing and whenever it comes to it i'll refer it to as kernel so what happened was the time kept on passing and somewhere around in in 19 around 1990 Linus Torvald he developed a kernel he named it Linux and put it under the GNU GPL license now what people had was a Linux a kernel was available and lots of applications utilities and everything that you wanted for a complete operating system were available 
to us. So people started the co started using this combination, and what you had was we people started call, calling it as the GNU slash Linux system. Okay. Now 1990 onwards, there has been a lot of development and modifications and other changes to this particular operating system or the whole applications and everything as such. So people have been developing, using and working with this particular operating system and believe me today the whole operating system, Linux based operating system have reached to a point where you can use them very easily and uh, very nicely without any problems. So what is the next step into this? Now before I proceed we need to discuss one more thing. There is a confusion. Some people call Ubuntu, Red Hat, Fedora. These terms are going to come across. So what exactly is this? I am saying there is something called as Linux and others are referring to these things as Linux. So let us try to understand. So what has happened is over a period of time lot of people have started compiling installable mechanism or installable media is available for Linux. Here people are picking up the Linux kernel they are taking a lot of open source or POS applications and they are combining them for a particular target audience. That means who is going to be the user. Now let us say my target audience is home user. So one thing to not notice about Linux system is, is uh, when you get this installable package you get a lot of applications with this so you don't install the operating system and keep on looking for different applications here and there mostly uh, 4GB uh, Linux installable DVD or uh, USB bootable thing you will be able to install or you will be having most of the applications that you will require for your day to day use so what I am trying to say is some people or companies <coughs> they decided to give it as a package now how do you give it as a package you want you want to have a target audience now if my target audience is home users I am going to package it in, a, in such a way that the interface is easy to use I am going to provide the day to day applications like what are the day to day applications that people will want people will want applications for multimedia okay which will be like uh, your music your videos okay then you will need web browser you will want some office suit and some other applications that are required so one of the very famous company with uh, or known Linux package or thing is referred as Ubuntu. So what is Ubuntu? We call these things as Linux distributions. A Linux so Ubuntu is a Linux distribution which will consist of a Linux kernel and other required applications <coughs> which will be needed for its working. Now let's say my target audience is some college students. So if uh, college students or engineering students apart from these basic things I will start packaging more uh, applications and programming language, compilers and other things and maybe I will also package some uh, help and tutorials that's going to help people who are going to use my package. Similarly, if my target audience are big companies where they are going to have big network and other things, my focus is going to be on high security networking tools and other things. So all these that you hear today, 
there are lot and lot of linux distributions there are distributions are being created by companies distributions are created by enthusiastic groups distributions are even being created by end users individuals who are hobbyists so what are the known distributions ubuntu is one of the very famous distributions these days but you can have red hat you have fedora you have open suze you have a very famous is debian many people have taken derivatives of debian and created a lot of distributions rather ubuntu is based on debian there is slackware there is mint there is there, there are n number of distributions i can spend a whole hour probably just talking about distributions so just keep in mind uh, these things are linux distributions they will have their own versions okay linux kernel is going to be its own version so please don't call vice versa ubuntu as linux or linux as ubuntu ubuntu is a distribution where it is using a linux kernel fine there are other open source or fos based operating systems there are there is something called as a debian herd okay i'm just keeping this you can search the net and take it as a assignment find out what is herd there is open bsd there is free bsd okay keep in mind this 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 these are not linux distributions these are different kernels and different open source operating systems the only thing to keep in mind is these are unix like operating systems but they are not unix so we are going to be working on linux mint as the primary distribution for all the work if possible i might demonstrate to you other distributions also during uh, the sessions that i am going to carry out if you have any questions or queries you can post it as comments or you can send me an email do subscribe to our channel for the notifications of the next videos as soon as they appear you can post in your queries in the comments i'll try to answer them as far as possible hope you like these videos and enjoy this series thank you